Now, one thing as an industry that we have to come to terms with is this one statement. I believe the majority of the people managing infrastructure just want to pass. There's only one requirement. It has to be built by them. No one likes any off-the-shelf things. The famous last words of most people in tech, I'm going to roll my own. <laughs> and once you do that, you're setting yourself up for tragedy. Now, a lot of people have started to think about building their own paths, and most of the technology you've been hearing about the last couple of years, a lot of people are starting to adopt things like Docker. And you ask, why Docker? Why is Docker becoming the foundation of most platforms that people either buy or build? And the real reason most Docker is important for most people is because it's like the first time people decouple their application from the machine. All the hype around Docker, there's real benefits. And this idea that I can have an application that's self-contained is where the first stage of portability comes into play. And then once you start to have things in Docker, it makes it super easy to decide where you want to run that. But that does not solve all your problems. Anyone here think Docker solves all their problems? I have snake oil to sell you. Once you get to Docker, you start to think about the next step. And this is where most people start to examine these cluster management tools like Kubernetes or Mesos. And the goal here is that when you adopt one of these platforms, they also decouple you from something. But this time, it's the infrastructure. So once your application is decoupled from the machine, the usually the last mile is decoupling yourself from the underlying infrastructure, whether that's virtual machines, a cloud provider, your laptop. And Kubernetes gives you a new set of abstractions that allow you to kind of run that at scale anywhere that you want to. And people have been running Kubernetes for a couple of years now in production. So it's no longer this new thing that no one knows how to operate. And then those people have learned, over time, Kubernetes also has missing pieces. Now, it's a much better starting point to build a distributed systems or your own platform, all these APIs built in. But what's missing? So when you go out and ask people, what should I do to actually run my applications, whether it's microservices or monoliths, there are things that you have to do that we mentioned earlier on. And then they'll recommend products like this. Nginx will deal with things like application management and how you get traffic to your application. You have things like open tracing to give you some visibility on what's talking to what, where's your latency. And then you have things like Vault for secrets management. And all of these things have nice APIs, and Prometheus provides this nice adapter to be able to scrape metrics from each unique application in your stack. And then the last box most people aren't familiar with, that is this new project called Spiffy. And what Spiffy does is it solves the real challenge most people have. We're all attuned to sending secrets to our applications. Here's how you connect to the database. Here's how you connect to this other thing. But the truth is, we have no identity for any of those applications. We actually don't know what we're sending these things to. So things like Spiffy try to give identity to our applications no matter where they're running. So once you have all of this, you start to ask yourself, where does Istio fit into all of this? And just like Docker and Kubernetes, the goal is that Istio doesn't replace those things, but it integrates with them so that you don't have to.